Welcome to John Gets Games. Today we'll be playing through a full three-player game of Trouble in Temple Town. Now I will be teaching how to play this game while we are actually playing it, and I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because if any mistakes are made, I can then put corrections directly on the screen and you should be able to see them. Now in terms of what we're doing in this game, there is an evil bad guy called Frank Ebola, and he is trying to infect Stanley. Now Stanley is a human, and we are part of the immune system trying to defend Stanley from this main bad guy, as well as all of these other bacteria and viruses that are just plagued all of his systems. Now this game has a neat noir style theme and you will be traveling around trying to squash the various eggs that have been laid down by all of these enemies because if too many eggs come down and they surround a zone then that is how infections occur and if we have too many infections then that's when the powerful Frank Ebola will enter the fray. Now I will explain how all of this works while we are playing but before we jump in I would like to ask that if you enjoyed this video you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also if you would like to direct support this channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongusgamescom support. There you will find a variety of ways with which you could do that, and there are some pretty cool perks that go along with uh, some of those, including voting on some of the videos that I make each month. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have Trouble in Temple Town fully set up for our three different players. Now, I would like to mention that this is a prototype version of the game, so not all of the art and components are exactly the way they will be in the final version. Now, at this point, we would normally talk about which one of these players we will be playing as for this playthrough, but since this is a fully cooperative game where all information is public, I figure we will play as all three of these characters. Now, in general, what we're trying to do in this game is we're going to move throughout these four different districts, and we will try to cure as many of these parasites as we can, and we're going to try to do that to the point where we can immunize three out of these four districts, or if we're able to defeat uh, Frankie Bola down here, who will show up in these districts once there are seven or more infections in the body. At this point, we are just about ready to take the first turn, although before we go into that, I do want to mention one thing that happened as part of setup. Now this deck right here is the event deck, and every single round we will draw a new event, and that is included as part of setup for this first round here. Now the one that we drew says shoddy duty imports are added again. It says that Stanley cut himself on a rusty nail and a rusty screw and another rusty nail. Now Stanley is the person that we are trying to defend against all of these parasites and bacteria, so obviously having them cut themselves on rusty nails is not a good thing. Now the effect of this event it says that we have to randomly spawn an active germ in the second district. When we zoom out, we can see that there are four districts total, and this is the first one, then second, third, and fourth. Now, that is why we have this uh, parasite right here on this location. As part of setup, we randomly drew one of these tokens, and it had a 13 on it. Now, the uh, terminology in this game is a little bit different based off of some of the events and some of the other components. Uh, that is because this is a prototype, but the active germs are also called wandering parasites, which is what this is right here, and that is why this is right over on that location. As part of setup, we also drew one of these lazy parasites for each district, and they all go down into the same uh, uh, region on each district. We randomly pulled out District 7, which is why there is a lazy parasite on each one of those spots right over here in those areas. All right, with all of that in mind, we can now jump into the first turn of the game, and we can see that Tyler Nall here is going to be the starting player. Uh, this token is going to move clockwise each round, and we can now have Tyler take their first turn. Now, if we look at their player area, we can see they have a special ability. Uh, it says Frisker's Keepers, and it says that whenever they cure a virus, they get two extra move points. Now, in this game, viruses and bacteria, as well as germs, are all effectively the same thing. These are the wandering and lazy bacteria that are hanging out in all of these districts. Now, the way we are going to do that is by using our action cards down here, and during our turn, we can spend as many of these cards as we want to. Now, it's worth noting that you can only hold up to two cards from this turn to the next, and in order to be as effective as possible, we would like to use all of our cards because in the next round, we will draw up to six more cards. Now, if we look at the cards themselves, you'll see that there are two different icons on each one of them, and on the right side, there is some words and a graphic. Now, that right-hand side image is always associated with the larger of the two icons, which is effectively the primary action for that card, but whenever you activate a card, you get to either do the primary or the secondary action. You don't get to do both. 
Now the number on them tells you the number of action points you get to do that. So in this case for this card, there are two action points going towards curing DNA. But instead of using the cure action on this card, we could put one action point going towards the move action. Now looking at all of the cards that we have right now, none of them have move as a primary. We can see that looks like this over here. And in order to effectively cure the uh, various bacteria on the board, we will have to move over and get to them. So with that in mind, let's take a closer look at the districts. Now the one I think we should prioritize is this District 2 right over here. Obviously Tyler Nall is all about curing bacteria. Uh, their special ability gives them extra movement points when they do that, so I figure having them head over here to District 2, where there are two of these enemy bacteria versus the one of all the other districts, makes sense. Now uh, whenever you enter one of these districts, you have to enter with this little enter location that is in the bottom spot right here, and now that we are in this district, we can plan out what we want to do. Now, in order to move around, you can see these little dots on the lines. This is the number of move action points that we have to use in order to travel along that line. Now, in order to actually try to combat one of these bacteria, we have to actually enter their zone. And you'll notice that each one of these little zones has a single opening. Now, that is the entrance to get into that zone. So we can see that in order to get into zone 7, we have to enter via this node right here. Now, whenever you enter one of these areas, it does cost one action point. So we can see that we need to go over here, which will cost one, then over to here, which will cost another one, and then one more action point to enter this node and try to cure this bacteria. With this in mind, Tyler can now start playing their action cards, and they will begin by playing this card here. That's going to get them two movement points, so they can go one, two, and then this card is discarded. And they can also use this one right here. Now this says all good DNA, and it has a question mark, and this means you can use this um, action point for any different type that you want. In this case, I figure we will use that wild action point as another movement, which will allow Tyler to enter this area with this lazy parasite. Now the way you actually cure these parasites is you have to use six action points to cure them, and that is for the lazy as well as the wandering type of parasite. And when they look back at their hand, Tyler can see they have a 3, a 3, and a 2 for curing uh, the bacteria. So they will go ahead and use both of these for the primary AP right here. That will get them up to 6 AP, which is what they need to defeat this bacteria. And it's worth noting that you have to defeat a bacteria within the same turn. The amount of uh, curing damage you effectively do to it will get wiped away from one turn to the next. So obviously they will hit it for 3 and then hit it for 3 again. And that will reach the 6, which is the threshold to defeat this bacteria. Now when that happens, this will get removed from the board, and then the player can grab one of these three DNA tokens and put it into their area. After this, they can move up once on the cured track. You'll see that it now tracks the number of these bacteria that they have cured, and whenever you get to an even numbered space on this cured track, you get a bonus of drawing another random action card, which you can then use in the middle of that turn. So that is obviously nice, and then we can see that Tyler Null has a special ability. It says they get two extra move points whenever they do a cure action, so in this case, they can now move twice. Now we can see that Tyler is currently in zone 7, so they will use their first bonus movement to exit that zone, and their second bonus movement to travel along this single movement street. At this point, Tyler has just two of these cards left in their hand, and as I said before, it always makes sense to try and spend all of your cards because you draw up to six at the start of the next round. Now, you can save up to two if you want to, but as far as uh, this position we are in right now, I think we should spend all of these. Now, the secondary ability on both of these is a movement AP, so we could use these two in order to have Tyler move a little bit closer to this wandering bacteria right here. Uh, we also have the main AP on these cards, this one is 2 towards curing DNA, and this one is 3 towards building. Now obviously in order to cure, we have to be in a zone with a bacteria and get to 6, which we are nowhere near. And for over here, this build DNA, we can construct a building. Now there are barriers and there are defense buildings. The defense buildings are the ones that can go out into these zones. Either one of those buildings requires you to get to 5 build DNA, and we could technically do that right now because whenever you spend your cards, you can discard your DNA that you have acquired to add AP to those cards. 
Now you can only spend up to five of these DNA points per turn, but we could hypothetically use this card and two out of our three to get to five and do a build action. Now, I don't think that actually makes sense for us right now, and I will explain a little bit more detail about how these buildings work very soon. I think instead, let's go ahead and have Tyler just move twice. So they can go right over here for one movement, and then right over here for the second movement. They have now used all of the action cards in their hand, and I think they are done with their turn. Although, before we do move on, I would like to mention that as extra actions, we can spend our DNA in order to pick up items or in order to purchase these weapons here. Now, each one of these items costs three DNA, so that is something Tyler could do right now. And each one of these weapons has a cost listed in the top left. We can see these cost three, then three, four, five, and then finally seven DNA over here. And I think I will explain the details of how these items work and how these weapons work in the future when it actually makes sense for us to grab them. Now that Tyler's turn is officially over, we can move to the next player's turn in clockwise order, and that will be Neutraliza right over here. Now, her special ability for this game says Builder's Gift. Uh, down here, it says that whenever they are building, they get a bonus of one action card that they can draw from the top of the deck and then use on that turn. Now, uh, that means she is very motivated to try and construct buildings, and fortunately, when we look to her hand, she has a three build DNA card and a two build DNA card. As I mentioned before, any of the buildings can be built with five of these build DNA, so they can get to that five with these two cards here, although they do have to be in the correct spot to use them. With that in mind, let's talk a little bit more about the two different types of buildings. The first of the two building types is this barrier right here. Now, these can only be constructed in the six wall zones that are along the top of these districts. Now, once all six of these spots have been filled in with the barrier, that whole district will become immunized, and all of the bacteria in the zone will get expunged, and we will effectively be able to ignore that region for the rest of the game. If we are able to fully immunize three out of these four districts, then that will be one of the ways that we can win the game. So that is an important reason why we want to get these walls built. The problem is that the only way we can get our characters over here onto these wall zones is by going all the way to the top of the zone and then leaving one of these three spots right here to go to the associated spot. Now again, this is a prototype version of the game. Uh, there are supposed to be little lines coming off of these. This zone right here allows you to walk to either of these two. The central zone allows you to go either uh, to these in the top. And then this one over here allows you to go to the two on the right. Now, traveling from here over to that spot costs 2 AP. So if we were to have uh, a Neutra here start off right here on this entrance, that would cost 1, 2 movement, then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 movement to get to any of these wall spots. Now, at the moment, looking at their hand, there's just no way they can make that happen, unfortunately. So I don't think they are going to be building a barrier on this turn. And instead, they could look to the other building type, which is this defense cannon. Now, you can only construct these if you are in a zone, and you will build it into that zone. Now, what these do is they actually suck up the bacteria eggs that the lazy and wandering bacteria will be planting around in these districts. And I'll explain how the eggs getting dropped works very soon here, but it is definitely a good thing for us to have these down to try and stop those eggs from coming out, because once any one of these zones has an egg in all three of the adjacent intersections to it, that zone will become permanently infected, and we lose the game if there are ever 13 infections out on the board. So if we look over here, I can tell you right now that this lazy bacteria is going to try and put an egg right down onto this spot because they always try to put them down onto the nodes that are the entrances for their zones. So with that in mind, I think we want to try and get this defense cannon built into this zone so that it can stop this egg from coming down. Now that means we need to get neutralizer into this zone right here, which will be one movement and then a second movement to enter zone six. And fortunately for her, she does have this two movement card, so she can get right over there with just one discarded card. And now she can discard both of these to get to the five build DNA that she needs in order to build this defense cannon right here into zone six. Once any player successfully constructs a building, they get three DNA as a bonus, just like if you were to cure one of the bacteria. So Neutra will get this right over here, and then of course her Builder's Gift ability will activate. Since she constructed a building, that means she gets a bonus action card, and this is another one of those wild DNA. It adds one that they can use. And now with these four cards left in hand, I think Neutra should use these three to do one, two, three, four, five movement. 
Now, she is currently in Zone 6, so she can use one of those movements to exit Zone 6. She has four movement left over, and I think she should go one, two, right over to here. And then she has two movement left over, but I think we should have her go three movement onto this location here. Now, as I mentioned before, you can use your DNA points to add AP to cards that you play. So she is going to use one of her three, which is going to bring her down to just two, in order to add that one movement to get right over here. Now, it is worth noting that as an action on a player's turn, they can discard any of the cards they have in their hand in order to get one of these DNA points. It's not a great return, but if you really need a DNA point, it's one way to get it. Now, uh, they obviously don't need to do that right now because they did have three to spend, and they now have two more. And you may be wondering why this spot on the board has a square shape on it and the rest of these have circles. Well, that is because this is the subway location on the board. Now, normally the only way players are able to move from one district to the next is from these entrance spots right here. If you're right here, you can spend one movement point to go to any other district. However, if you are able to get this subway pass item, which costs you three DNA points, you can then use this to go from any subway spot to any other subway spot in these districts. So that makes you much more mobile out on the board, but you do have to spend three DNA in order to pick this up. At this point, Neutra has just one card left in her hand, and I think she's going to keep it. Uh, she could use this for one action point towards constructing on her next turn, or two action points towards curing. Now, the reason I'm having her go all the way over here is because that's going to get her closer to these wall spots, and it would be good, I think, to have Neutraliza try to immunize one of these zones, because again, once we have six of these constructions in one of these zones, we can effectively ignore it because none of the bacteria can exist over here, and no new infections can happen. So we're kind of setting ourselves up for the next turn, and I think that Neutra is done with her turn now. This means it's time for Old Pa Setmal to take their turn, and their special ability says Adrenaline Shot. It says they have plus one move every single turn of the game, and they are going to start off right on this entrance spot, and then they're going to use this card right here, which gives them three movement, and they will go one, two, and then three, entering this zone seven. Next up, they're going to discard both of these Cure DNA cards. That will be 3 plus 3, which gets them to the 6 they need in order to cure this lazy bacteria here. As soon as they do that, they will generate 3 DNA, and they will go up once on their Cured track. Now at this point, they have 3 cards left, and they have not used their plus 1 movement, and they are going to use that now. And with this, they are going to exit zone 7. Now, looking at their hand, they're going to use this card, which is not super flexible. It just gives them one movement as an option, and they will go right here. Next up, they will use this wild DNA to get another movement, bring them to here, and then they will use the secondary ability on this card to get one more movement. Now, as I mentioned before, whenever you are on one of these entrance spots, you can use one movement to go to the entrance of any other district. And in this case, they want to go from District 4 all the way over to District 1. And the reason for that is because all of the other districts have these players in them, and we're kind of working on dealing with the menaces here. But District 1, we've kind of ignored so far. Now, once they go over here, they can use some of their uh, DNA to amplify that move. And they have decided they're going to go one, two more locations onto this spot right here. Now, that means they are going to spend two of their DNA, so they have just one remaining. And we can see that they have set themselves up well to be just one movement away from trying to cure this bacteria on their next turn. And they, of course, always get one bonus movement. So they are planning ahead. They have now used all of their cards, and they are now done with their turn. This means all players have now taken a turn, and we can now go into the first enemy phase of the game. Now, there are four different steps to the enemy phase, and the first one involves activating all of the wandering bacteria. Now, we start with the lowest number district and move over, but right now we just have one of these wandering bacterias, and the first thing they want to do is lay an egg. Now, that is going to go down onto the open node that has an entrance for the zone they are in. Uh, they can put this down right over here, and if there had already been an egg there, or if one of these player characters had been on that spot, they would have moved clockwise to try and put that egg down into another one of these zones. Now as soon as all three of the nodes around a zone has an egg in it, that area will become permanently infected. We would put this token down right here. We will generate another wandering bacteria. That's how we generally get these out onto the board. And if we get to seven of these infections, that will cause Frank Ebola to enter the fray out on the board. If we ever hit 13 of these infections, we lose the game, and once an infection happens, there is no way to erase it. So we definitely want to do the best we can to stop these eggs from coming down and infecting regions. 
after laying the egg, the wandering bacteria is now going to move. Uh, that's why they're called wandering bacteria, and they will go to the zone that is next up in the numerical order. So they will go from 13 to 14 now, although it's worth noting that if there was anything else in the zone, whether that be a defense cannon or another enemy or maybe one of the player characters, then they would skip over that zone and go to the next higher one that ha is empty. Either way, they will enter this spot right here, and since this is our only wandering bacteria to activate, that is going to finish out the first step. The second step involves activating all of the lazy bacteria. We once again start with District 1 and move over, and they work just the same way as the wandering bacteria, except they never leave this spot. So in that case, this lazy bacteria is going to try and lay an egg into the entrance. We can see that this is the entrance spot right here, but there is a player character on that spot, so they will move on and put this down into the next spot that is clockwise from that zone. So they'll put this egg right over here, which I guess is technically adjacent to a lot more areas than this one was, so maybe we should not have put this character over here, but either way, uh, this lazy bacteria is now done with their job, and they will just hang out here trying to continue to infect this area of the board. Now at the moment we only have one other lazy bacteria, and it is going to try and put an egg onto this spot right here, however that is adjacent to this defense cannon. This defense cannon is going to defend all three of these nodes, so instead of this egg going down here, it will get sucked up right into the middle of this zone. Now this defense cannon can essentially absorb five of these eggs. If there are ever five of here at the end of the round, then this defense cannon will be destroyed. And there are ways to repair these defense cannons by uh, using the build DNA, but either way, we have now effectively defended that spot. This lazy bacteria is no closer to actually infecting the zone, and they are done with their activation. That's going to finish out the lazy bacteria step, which means we can now go into the third enemy step, which is the Frank Ebola activation. Now, we don't technically do anything for this step until Frank Ebola is out here in the districts, and that is only going to happen as soon as seven infections happen. You can see that it's going to be tracked right over here, and again, an infection happens once a zone has three eggs around it. So right now, we are nowhere near having Frank Ebola uh, getting into our way, but I do want to talk a little bit about what happens once Frank Ebola is out out there so that we can play around it. Now as soon as we get to seven infections, we will then take one of these clue tokens and it will appear on one of these subway spots. After that happens, every one of these steps we are going to draw one of these random location tokens, and instead of looking at the number, we will look to the number of dots in the bottom. Now that is going to dictate where the next clue for where Frankie Bulla is going to be uh, from the location. We can see we've got twos and threes, uh, so if we had pulled something like this one right here, that means we would put this clue token down into the first three, which means we put it over there. And this is effectively showing how Frankie Bulla is wandering around, and these clue tokens can cause these areas to become infected. Now, one of the ways that we win the game is by completely cornering Frank Ebola, which will cause them to actually appear out on the board. That's only going to happen if we are able to um, bring our player characters over onto these spots to stop another clue token from coming out. And then once Frank Ebola is out, we have to cure him three times. Now, the first of these steps will take an eight cure. The second step will take a 10 cure. And the third step will take a 12 cure. And only after do that will we win the game. Now again, we will win the game if we either defeat Frankie Ebola or if we have immunized a number of districts equal to the number of players. So that would be three of these districts for us. But it's also worth mentioning that once the game ends, we will only win if we have a collective amount of DNA equal to 10 times the number of players. That means we would need 30 DNA in our player areas. So it does make a lot of sense to spend this DNA in order to uh, buy weapons as well as equipment and to modify our turns to do extra action points. But we have to hoard 30 DNA in order to have a chance at winning the game. So uh, obviously we will deal with Frank Ebola in a while. That's not going to happen until we have seven of these infection steps. And I'll explain how this works once again once this actually starts happening. I just wanted you to have a decent idea of how this step works. This means we have now finished out the third step of the enemy phase, and the fourth step just involves checking our defense cannons. If any of them have four, um, sorry, five of these eggs on that spot, then that will destroy the cannon, but this one is currently fine. So we have now finished out the enemy phase. At this point, we can move into the second round of the game. The first thing we do is we will pick up any of the wandering bacteria that are on their side. They'll only be on their side on the turn they are actually generated when an area gets infected. And after we have done all of that, we can move the starting player token uh, once over clockwise to the next player. 
After this, we can now draw another one of these event cards and evaluate it. In this case, we can see this one says uh, runny nose. Uh, it says that, and naturally, Stanley has no tissues, which just means he has to make things go the other way. Now down here, it says that curing gems is gonna cost one extra point this overall round. The next thing we have to do is draw a random location from the bowl, and on this location, we will get one lazy parasite in each district. In this case, we have pulled location 17. So that means we will put this lazy parasite down into that 17, this 17, and then of course, these over here, and that's actually pretty good for us considering it looks like um, uh, Neutraliza is relatively close to this lazy parasite, but either way, that is how we are going to seed all of the districts with new lazy parasites. And then the last thing we do as preparation for the new round is each player is going to draw until they have six of these action cards face up in their area. Down here we can see that Neutraliza will take the first turn of this round, and they are definitely going to start out by moving. We know that their plan was to make it over here to try and construct barriers up here on the top of the district, but considering they are right next to the entrance for this lazy parasite, they figure they should probably do something about it. Now it is going to cost three movement to go over here, so they can go right over there, and that's going to cost them one, two with this wild AP, a third one with this card, and then they currently have two of these DNA, so they will use one of them to get up to the four. Uh, now that means they have gone one, two, three, and then that fourth one brings them into the zone along along with this lazy bacteria, and then they have to get up to six of these cure DNA to defeat it. Well, that's gonna be one, two, three, four. This will be a fifth one, and then they do have one DNA left over, so they can use this to get up to six, and that means they have successfully defeated this lazy bacteria. Now, as a bonus, she can take three DNA for this successful cure action, and she can go up once on this cure track. And at this point, I think Neutraliza is done playing cards. This three value build DNA card is really good for her. Uh, hypothetically, on the next turn, she is getting closer and closer to the top of her district to try and start constructing those barriers. Now, at this point, she does have three DNA, and each one of the items that she can buy will cost three DNA. So let's take a look at what those options do for us. Up here, we can see that there are four different item types. We've already talked about the subway tickets, which allow you to move from the square spaces to other square spaces for the rest of the game for just one uh, movement point. And the next type are these egg baskets. Now, before I explain how these work, I need to talk a little bit more about what happens when a player finishes their movement on a spot with an egg. Obviously, this did not happen at all in the first round of the game, but now there are eggs out on the board, and if you ever move, uh, finish a movement on an egg, you will remove the egg back to the supply. This is the way we can stop infections from happening out on the board, and this only happens when you uh, end your movement on the spot. However, if you have an egg basket, then you can collect these eggs just by moving through those zones, and you hold onto these eggs on your player board, and every two eggs counts as one DNA for the end of the game, because again, we need 30 banked up DNA in order to win. Now, uh, that is the reason why we want to pick up these egg baskets, although there aren't that many eggs just yet, so I don't think um, Neutralizer wants to pick one up right now. And then the other two item types actually have to do with the weapons here. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about the weapons a little bit more. We can see right here we have this Penny Chillin' Bomb, and it would cost three DNA to purchase, and it has these two spots right here. Now this means you can use this weapon twice before it is permanently lost, um, it's removed from the game, it does not go back here to the supply, and down here you can see that whenever you use one of these charges, that will add three cure um, AP points towards the DNA. Now down here we have a range, and this allows you to actually do cure actions from a spot that is adjacent. Uh, this means you could either uh, attack from along this line if you are trying to hit Frank Ebola here, and in fact you are never allowed to be where Frank Ebola is, uh, so we will definitely need weapons if we want to try and defeat him to win the game that way. Or you can also use these to shoot from an entrance spot into a zone, so you don't actually have to spend the movement points to go in and out. Now with that in mind, we can see over here that this scope will add one range to the weapons that don't have any range. This uh, revolve o fen right here has a range of zero, so if we had a scope on a character, this would have a range of one, and we can now shoot from range. And then over here, this is just extra ammo. If you have this item, then whenever you get a weapon, you actually get another charge than the number that are listed on those different spots. So with all of that in mind, we have a lot of different stuff we can do uh, with the three DNA, but I think Neutraliza is actually going to hold onto hers for now, and she won't pick up any at this point.
With the neutralizes turn done, we can now move over to Old Paw Setemal here, and the first thing they're going to do is take their bonus movement. This will allow them to move into Zone 7 right here and combat this Lazy Parasite. Now they of course need to get to 6 Cured AP in order to defeat it. And even though it might seem pretty inefficient, this is how they're going to do it. Uh, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, and 6. Uh, the only one of the primary cure DNAs that they drew was this one with just one. So uh, that does cost them 5 cards, which is unfortunate, but they have successfully defeated this Lazy Parasite which means they're going to get three DNA, and they will also go up one more on the cured track. Now we can see they got to an even spot, which means as a bonus, they get to take one extra action card and put it right into their hand, and it is a cured DNA card. That's uh, certainly unfortunate. They would have loved to have this earlier on. Now at this point, they have these two cards available to them to use, and it looks like they do want to use this move DNA for the three value. They can use one move to exit zone 7, and then two movement to head right over here, and that is going to finish out their movement. And since they have ended on a spot with an egg, they can remove this egg from the board, and they're feeling pretty good about that. At this point, they have just this one card left over, and they're going to use it. It's just going to give them one move, and to that, they're going to add two DNA which means they have three movement total, which will get them right over here, and they are angling to set themselves up to try and deal with this lazy bacteria on their next turn. Also, they are getting higher up in the district, so they could potentially construct some barriers once they are up here. Either way, that's going to finish out Old Paw Setemal's turn, which means it's time for Tyler Null to go, and they're going to begin by doing a two movement with this card here. And this will let them go one, two spaces into this zone 14 here. Now they want to cure this Wandering Parasite, but unfortunately, this Runny Nose event is out, which is going to increase the uh, cost to cure. Now I just realized I did not have that come into effect for Old Paracetamol, but fortunately they did have one of these DNA left over, so they could have spent one of these to make that happen. So I'm going to have them spend this right now so that we are now back to uh, playing correctly, and we can see that Tyler Knoll does need to get to 7 cure DNA in order to completely defeat this Wandering Bacteria. In this case, they're going to spend a few cards to do it. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one of their DNA to get up to seven. That means they have successfully defeated this wandering bacteria. This means they will get a bonus of three DNA, and they'll go up once on their cured track. That means this bonus will activate since they are on an even spot to this track. They will get another one of these action cards, and then as a bonus for them, their Frisker's Keepers here will give them two extra movement points because they did finish a cure action. With these two movement, they will go one, two, and that will get rid of this egg right here. And then as an action, they're going to spend this move card to go three spaces. That means they can go one, two, and then three to enter this zone right here with this lazy parasite. And then they've decided to end their turn by just discarding this action card to get one DNA. This is, again, an action you can do at any point during your turn. And they figure they don't really want to save onto this, and getting that one DNA might be pretty helpful for them. At this point, every player has taken an action, so we can now move into the enemy phase. The first step involves activating any wandering bacteria, but we currently don't have any. We will get more once some infections start happening, but right now we are looking pretty good. So we can now go into the second step, where we activate the lazy parasites. The first one is right over here, and it's going to put an egg down onto its entrance. Uh, the next one is right over here, and that will also put an egg right down over here. The third one is over here in this area, and it wants to put an egg down onto its entrance, but this defense cannon still exists, so that is going to bring this egg right over here, and it is now uh, absorbing two of these eggs. And then finally, this lazy parasite over here will spawn an egg on its entrance. Next up, we have enemy phase step three, where we would activate Frank Ebola, but he's not out here on the board just yet. And then we have step four, where we check our defense cannons. If this was at five, it would be destroyed, but currently it just has two eggs. So that will finish out the enemy phase. We can now go into the third round of the game, and the first thing we do is reset any of our wandering uh, bacteria, and it looks like we don't have any. So the second thing we do is we move the starting player marker over here, and Old Pacetamol will begin this round off. And then it's once again time for us to draw a random one of these tokens to put a lazy parasite down into each district. In this case, we have found a three, so that means this lazy parasite will go right over here, and then the same location will get occupied in each one of the districts. The last thing we have to do before taking actions is refill our hands, so everybody will make sure they have six cards. 
and then we can draw the top event card for the round. Now this one says sinusitis acute. It says, uh, just inhale those boogers, he thought. It'll be fine, he thought. Now it says down here that um, if there are more than five total germs of any type out on the board, we move the virus marker forward one space. And unfortunately for us, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these lazy parasites out. So uh, that's certainly more than five. So we will just go up once here on this infection track. All right, let's start taking actions and old Pasetamol gets to begin things off. At the moment, we can see they're in the middle of District 1, and I think that they should go ahead and spend their 3 movement card. That will let them go 1, 2, 3 and stop on this spot, which will eliminate this egg. Now, once they have done that and finished out this action, they can use their once per round ability of their Adrenaline Shot, which gives them one move, and that will let them enter Zone 17. And then they can discard all three of these cards from their hand in order to get to six cure DNA. That's going to be enough to eliminate this lazy parasite, which will get them three DNA, and it will move them once up on their cured track. And then I think it makes sense for them to use this two wild DNA to get one movement and then another movement. Obviously, that is going to cost an extra move. And with this, they're just going to spend one of their DNA to make that happen. Now, at this point, they just have this one card left with its one cured DNA, and they're just going to discard this to gain one DNA and put it back into their pool. And it looks like that's going to finish out their turn. Tyler Knoll can now start things off, and they've decided they want to spend three other DNA to buy a weapon. It appears the one they want will be this Revolve Ofen. Uh, that is a range of zero, and currently they are in a zone with an enemy on it. And they figure they would rather take this one with just plus two cure instead of plus three, because it has four of these activations instead of two. Now, before they even buy this one, they've decided they're going to spend their other three DNA, because they did have six total, and they're going to pick up this extra ammunition so that their weapons have an extra slot. They can then add this right over here, and it's worth noting, you can only hold three of these items at any one time. Now, normally, they would get four charges on this Revolvo Fen, but because of this ammo, they get five charges on here, and they can remove a charge to add two to the Cure DNA for one of their Cure actions. Now, you are allowed to use your weapon multiple times within a turn, and it looks like what they want to do is to spend this card right here, which will add three to their Cure DNA, and then they will use two charges from this Revolvo Fen. That means they are at two plus two plus three, or seven. That is one more than they needed, but they think this is still the best way for them to evaluate their turn, so they now have enough DNA to cure a Lazy Parasite, so they can knock this one right out of that zone. Now this is going to get them 3 DNA, and they will go up once on their track. And at this point, they do get a bonus of plus 2 movement, but before they use this, they want to use these two cards right here. Now these will get them up to 6 building DNA, and you need 5 in order to construct a building. And it looks like they do want to build this defense cannon right over here into zone 17. Now whenever you build a defense cannon, it immediately eliminates all of the eggs that are on the adjacent spots. These do not get absorbed by the cannon, it actually just removes them entirely. And then in the future, this cannon will obviously absorb some. Uh, right now it doesn't look like anything is planning on putting eggs down into these areas, but they figure they may as well use the cards they have, and it did remove one egg, which is certainly a good thing. At this point, I think Tyler is done with Zone 17 here, and unfortunately, I don't think their special ability will activate. Uh, my reading of this says they get two bonus movement when they do a cure action, as long as they do that movement as part of the cure action. But after they cured, they built this building right here. So now what they want to do is get down over here and try to cure this lazy parasite. But in order to do that, they need one, two, three, four, five movement. Now they can do that by getting rid of this card for one, uh, this wild card will give them two more, and on top of that, they need two more movement to make this happen, so they will get rid of two out of their three DNA. Now with this, they can then go one, two, three, four, five, and now once they're here, they can use this wild to get two of the cure DNA they need, and then if we look down to their gun, they can remove two more of these charges to get four more cure damage. That means they're at six total which means they've done their second successful cure action of the round. They can remove this lazy parasite right here. This will get them three more DNA, and they will go up again on this bonus track. Uh, we can see they go from three up to four. That means they get another bonus card, and it is a two cure or a three move, and now they will indeed get their two bonus movement. 
Currently, they're in zone three, so they could spend one movement to come out here, and they have one more movement, and they will add to that these three movement from this move card right here, so they have four more move available, and they will spend two of those to come down here, their third one to move from this entry point over to the entry point of District 4, and then it looks like they'll use their fourth movement to head right over here. There are a couple lazy parasites in this area, and they want to work them down before it gets out of control. All right, it's time for Neutraliza to take her turn, and it does look like she wants to build. Now we can see that she is currently in zone 17, and in order to get up to one of these barrier spots, she has to go one movement, two, three, and then four, five. It's always two to go from this spot over. Now, in order to get up to five, she has decided to get rid of this uh, two card and three of her DNA. Now, again, you can only spend up to five DNA a turn to amplify your cards, and she wants to be efficient with this to start off. So that is going to get her all the way over to here, because again, from this spot, she can go to this location or to that location there. Now, once she is on this spot, she needs to get up to five build power. And unfortunately, she has three of these three value cards. So she's going to discard these two, which is a little bit inefficient, but that will get her up to six, which is more than enough. And that means she will build the first of these barriers in the game. Now, that's going to go down right over here. And nothing actually happens when we put this down uh, mechanically to the game until we get to six of them in a district, which will immunize that overall district. However, uh, Neutralizer will get three extra DNA points for this build action. She can add these into her area, and her bonus is going to give her one extra card from the top. And it looks like it's yet another build card. Uh, maybe she's going to build again this turn. And in fact, I think that is what she will do. Now, you're not allowed to go from any one of these wall spots to another one. You have to exit. That is going to cost two movement, but she can get rid of this card to do that. And then from here, she can discard this card for two more movement to enter this location. And then she can get rid of both of these cards to once again get up to six build power. Now, that is going to construct another barrier right here and it will allow her to draw another action card. So in this case, she has found this one with a two build and three cure DNA on it. And this one does look like it could be pretty good for her in the future. So she's gonna go ahead and hold onto this one. Uh, it is good for everybody to be curing different things. And this has a two build on it, which might work out well as well. So she is going to now end her turn. This means everybody has taken their turn, so we can now go into the enemy phase. Uh, once again, we can start off by seeing there are no uh, wandering bacteria, so we can skip right to the second step where we activate the lazy parasites. Now over here we have one of them, so that is going to put one egg down onto the entrance, which will be right over here. Uh, into this zone, it looks like we have no lazy parasites. This one right over here is going to have a lazy parasite activate onto this spot here, and then this one will once again activate, and this egg will once again get absorbed by this defense cannon. Now over here, there are two of these lazy parasites, so that means each one of these will put an egg down. Uh, this one right up here will try to put an egg onto this spot, but there's already an egg there, so it will go clockwise up to here and put an egg down on there, and then this one will put an egg onto that location right here. Now, fortunately for us, we have not generated any infections just yet. Again, that happens once any zone is uh, has all three of its nodes filled in with eggs or with these Frankie Clue tokens, which will happen uh, once we get to seven overall infections. The last thing we do is check our defense cannons. Neither of them has five or more eggs on it, so we can now go into the next round. Uh, the first thing we do is refresh any wandering bacteria, but it doesn't look like we have any. So we can now move the starting player marker over here to Tyler Knoll, and then it's time to put one more lazy parasite into each one of the districts. Now we can look into this bowl and pull out a random token, and it says 18 on it. That means we can put these uh, lazy parasites into the 18th zone right here. Oops, <laughs> just bonked this over, and this will go over into 18, and that will go all the way across the board. The next thing we can do is draw an event card, although technically we are supposed to do this before we seed out all of those lazy parasites. Sorry about that. So in this case, we can look here and this says move along. It says that traffic cops actually are doing their job. <laughs> it says that these new blood thinners are working wonders for Stanley. Three cost streets only cost two for movement on this round. All right, the last thing we have to do before we take our turns is fill up our hands to six cards. And then Tyler Null can take their turn. Now, the first thing they want to do is spend three of their DNA, and that will allow them to pick up one of these items. Now, the one they want to grab will be this egg catcher. 
And the reason for this is because they're planning on walking through a few eggs this turn, and they would like to pick them up without having to stop on those spots. After they do that, they have decided they would like to move, and they're going to start off by using both of these cards here, which gives them five movement points. When we look out here to the districts, we can see that Tyler is over here in the fourth one, and now with the first two movement, they're going to head right over here. Now, normally when you stop on a, a location that has an egg, you just get rid of it, but since they have the egg catcher item, they actually get to keep this egg right here, and every two eggs they have at the end of the game will be worth one DNA towards the 30 that we need collectively. Now, uh, they've just moved twice, but now they can move three more times. And if you remember, the event says that the triple movement spots only take two movement for this round. So that means they can get over here for just two movement, and they can then capture this egg right here. And then they have one movement left, and with that, they can enter zone 17. Next up, they would like to cure this lazy parasite right here. And fortunately, they have a bunch of these cure action cards. Now they're gonna use these two right here, which will get them to the six cure power that they need, and that will eliminate this lazy parasite, which will get them three DNA as a bonus. They will go up once more on the cure track right here, and then their bonus will activate where they get two free movements. Well, with the first of these, they can exit that location, and then they would like to move over to this subway spot, but that would cost them two movement, because again, the event says that these three movement ones just cost two. Now, they only had one more available to them, so they will discard this uh, wild action card for two more movement, so that means with the two they got as a bonus and two right here, they have four moves total. Effectively, that means they could go one, two, three, four, and they have now entered the 18th zone over here. When we come back here to their options, we can see that they can discard this token right here from the Revolvo Fen, and that will permanently discard this weapon, but it will give them two cure power. When they add that to this three cure power here, they are at five curing power, and they can get rid of one DNA to get to six, and that means that for the second turn in a row, they are able to get rid of two of these enemies from the board. So that Lazy Parasite gets removed. And then they will get three more DNA as a bonus, and they will go up once more on this track. That brings them, oops, sorry, from the five to the six right here, and that gives them a bonus action card. And this one, it gives them three move or one cure. And of course, they get another bonus activation because they cured again, so that gives them two more movement. Well, with the first of these movements, they will exit zone 18, and now they will go ahead and play the card they just got as a bonus. This adds three movement, and they had one more from the bonus, so they have four more movement available to themselves, and they will once again utilize that uh, special event uh, that worked out really well for them this round. That's going to allow them to go across here for just two movements, so they've done three movements so far, and at this point, they do have one movement left, uh, and they figure they will go ahead and jump into this area. If they stayed right here, then I suppose an egg would would go onto this location instead of that one, but it doesn't stop the egg from getting put down. So they're going to just position themselves to very easily take care of this uh, lazy parasite on the next turn. Of course, as long as they're able to get the uh, cure action cards on the next draw. With that, Tyler is now done, so now Neutraliza can take their turn. Now, when we come back to District 3, we can see that on her last turn, she built two of these barriers, and I think she should try to do that again. Now, in order to get out over here, she's going to need two movement to come back here, two movement to cross over this spot, because again, the event is giving a discount, and then two more movement to go onto this location here. And that is going to be six movement total, and she did draw two of these three movement cards. So she will discard both of these, and that will go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in order to build, she needs five building uh, action power, and she is lucky enough to have a three right here and a two. So that is going to be what the, uh, she needs to get the third of these barriers done over here, and this district will be halfway uh, completed towards being immunized, which again will wipe out all of the various enemies and all of the eggs in this uh, spot, although infections would remain. So we can add this right over here, and as a bonus, she will get three DNA. And then in addition to all of that, her Builder's Gift will activate, giving her one bonus card. So we can draw that from the top, and this is going to be two wild action points. And you know what? I think we should have Neutra try to get another one of these barriers built on this turn. That would be her second double barrier turn, and we can do that by discarding this one right here for two movement. 
that will allow her to go right here, and then she could discard this uh, wild action points as two movement, and that will allow her to go right over here, and then lastly, she has this card here with one build action. Now, you can spend up to five of your DNA to modify your cards, but at this point, she hasn't used any of that yet, and you can only spend the DNA to modify cards that have the action on it. So she could not just spend five DNA right now to build, she would have to have a card with that symbol. Now, this one does have a single one right here, so by playing this single build action uh, power and then adding four to it by discarding four DNA, she can get another barrier built. Now, at this point, she actually has nine DNA to play with, so she can easily get rid of four of this, and that's going to complete her second build action for the turn. So another barrier is going to get placed down right over here, and uh, Neutra will once again get three more DNA into her supply. Her Builder's Gift will also activate again because she finished a building, so she will get another random card, and this one has three movement on it. Uh, it also has two builds, so this one works out pretty well for her, and yeah, she's going to go ahead and use this right now. That's going to give her three movement, I think. And then she's going to add one more to that by discarding one of her DNA. Now, this is the fifth DNA she has spent this turn, so she is at her max, but that means she has four moves, and that will allow her to go one, two, three, four, because once again, that event says this is just a two move instead of a three. We have made very good use out of that event so far this round. All right, Neutraliza is done with her very effective turn, and now old Pasetamol can go. At the moment, we can see that he is here in District 1 and is pretty poised to jump up here and try to build a barrier of their own, and that is going to be what they are going to start their turn off with. Now, that is going to take two movement, and they're going to discard this card right here. Uh, that will give them the two movement they need to get right over here, and then they need five build action points to get that barrier built. Fortunately, they have a two card right here, and then a two wild card, so that gets them to four, and then they will discard one of their DNA in order to get to five. And this will allow them to put a barrier down, and they will get three DNA as a bonus. Next up, I think it's time for Old Pa to try and come down here and maybe deal with this parasite right here. Now that's quite a bit of movement, but remember the special ability for Old Pa Setmal is the Adrenaline Shot, which gives them one movement per turn. Now they are going to discard this card, which gives them three movement, so they can add to that the one they always get per turn, so they are at four. That means they can go one, two, three, four, and then they have decided they're going to discard two of their DNA to add to this movement, and that will give them two more movement. So once again, the event allows them to go uh, across this for two movement instead of three, so they can go right over here, and when they land on this spot, they can go ahead and eliminate this egg. For their next action, they have decided to buy one of these weapons. They're going to spend three of their DNA, and that will give them this Penny Chillin' Bomb. Now, that is going to give them three uh, uh, cure AP when it comes to trying to cure one of the enemies. It will also shoot at one range, and they will get two charges for it. So they can add this onto their player board right here, and now they want to use it. Now we can see they can discard this to get two Cure AP, and this one will get them two more. And in order to do a regular Cure action, you of course need to get up to six. So they will discard this, which adds three. That means they're actually overkilling here. They have seven Cure AP coming in, and it will come at a range of one. Now that range is important because, as you can see, Old Passet Mall is not currently in Zone 3. Now when you have a range of 1, that allows you to either shoot from a node into the zone through the entrance right here, or again, you could shoot to an adjacent node along one of these lines if you are targeting Frank Ebola if they are out and targetable on the board. So in this case, they are able to hit this uh, Lazy Parasite because they are positioned at the entrance, and that is going to do 7 Cure AP to it, which is more than enough to eliminate it. This means they're going to get 3 AP as a bonus, and they will go up once on their Cure Track, and that gets them to an even spot. That is the fourth Cure action they have done, and that's going to get them a bonus action card, and this is two wild action points. Well, they can tell that there's one Lazy Parasite up here in the northern parts of this district, and they would like to get some more of these barriers built, so they're going to use this as two movement, and that will allow them to cross over here, once again utilizing the event of this round, which lets us go across a three for just two actions, and that is going to finish out their turn. At this point, all of the players have taken a turn, so now we can go into the enemy phase. As usual, we start by activating any wandering bacteria, but currently we don't have any, so now we'll go into the second phase where we activate these lazy parasites. Now, we'll start with District 1, and it will try to put an egg down on its entrance, but old paracetamol is on that spot, so this will go to the clockwise spot right over here. 
Next up, we have this lazy uh, parasite right here, and it will try to put an egg onto this entrance. However, as soon as this goes down, this is adjacent to this defense cannon. So that egg will get sucked up right here and not actually go out onto that node. Next up, we have District 3, and this lazy parasite is going to put an egg on that location. This one will also spawn an egg right here, and once again, that egg will get absorbed by this defense cannon hanging out in Zone 6. It has done a lot of work for us in this game so far. And then, finally, we have this lazy parasite. It wants to put an egg onto its entrance, but it already has an egg, so this will go to the next spot clockwise around, which is right over there. Now, the moment that happens, we can see right here that Zone 11 has an egg in all three of the uh, spots that are around it, and that means we have just had the first infection happen of the game. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is we can move this track up right here. Uh, we are at the two spot because, again, we had an event that gave us one uh, bump up on this track. And then we can take an infection token and put it right down here in the middle, and once again, there is no way to remove these from the game. The next thing that happens with this infection action is another wandering bacteria will get spawned onto the board. Now it's going to go onto the next empty location above the number of the zone that just became infected. So this is an 11. So the wandering bacteria will come here on 12 and we'll just kind of put it down on its side to know that this won't be actually activated on this turn. It'll get stood upright at the beginning of the next round. At this point, there is one more lazy parasite, so we're going to put one egg down at the entrance for that one right over here, and that's going to finish out the enemy phase because we have not gotten to seven infections to start putting out these Frank Ebola clues, and we don't have any of these defense cannons that are at five or more eggs. This one is at four, so it is very close to being destroyed. Now, once again, you can enter a zone with a defense cannon and spend the build action points at a rate of one to one to remove these eggs, but I'm not sure if any of us are going to be able to come over here before this actually gets knocked out. Okay, let's now move into the next round, and the first thing we do is we stand up any of the wandering bacteria that are on their side. Next up, we can move the starting player pawn over here, and then we can draw an event. Now, I know I have uh, drawn these out of order a couple times in the past. Sorry about that. Now is the time we're supposed to evaluate these. And if we look at the details of this one, it says, those poor souls wanting for food have taken to crime. It says that Stanley hasn't really eaten in a long time, and the first two germs in the third zone immediately incubate one egg each. Now we can look over here, this is the third district, and whenever you evaluate the enemies within a district, technically you are supposed to start with the lowest number zones and go up. I know I haven't done that uh, correctly throughout this video, but I'll try to do that uh, correctly uh, moving on. So that means this uh, uh, lazy parasite right here and this one will both incubate for one. Now we can see over here that as soon as this one tries to incubate, it is going to put an egg right over here, and this one will try to put an egg down, and that will once again get sucked up by this defense cannon. Now, if we look back over here, once this egg went down, we have immediately created an infection in this zone number three. Now that means we have to put another one of these tokens out right here. That's also going to remove this lazy parasite from the board, and it will spawn a new wandering bacteria. That's going to go into the next zone uh, up from three, so that's going to go over here at four. And we have to push our infection count up to the three spot. Moving on, we now have to pick a new token from this bowl, and that will be where a new lazy parasite appears in all of these districts. And it looks like we have found zone 19. So that means we have to add a lazy parasite right here, and then we'll put one there, as well as here, and over there in zone 4. Now things are getting pretty crowded up here in the uh, top portions of all of these districts, and the last thing we have to do is draw our cards. As always, we will keep drawing until everybody has 6 cards available. And now we can start taking actions with Neutraliza beginning things off. Now, we can tell that District 3 is getting pretty overrun, and I think we are going to try and immunize this district on this round if possible. Currently, we can see that Neutraliza just needs two movement to go from here to either one of these spots, so she can go ahead and start things off by discarding this two movement card. That's going to bring her right over here. And the next thing she should do is construct a barrier. Now that's going to cost 5 build AP, and we get 1 from this card here, and then that's 2, 3, 4, so we can make up that 5th one by having neutralize the discard one of her DNA, and she has successfully constructed this. That means she immediately gets 3 DNA as a bonus, and then her Builder's Gift ability will activate. That's going to get her 1 bonus action card whenever she builds, so she can add this over here into her hand. 
Next up, we can see that Neutra needs to get out of this area, and that's going to cost two movement, so she can discard both of these cards, and that will get her right over here, and she figures, in addition to that, she will spend two more of her DNA to add two AP to that movement. That means she will be able to get all the way over to here, and at this point, she has spent three DNA, so she could only spend two more if she wanted to, and it just doesn't look like there's going to be a good way to use this card and do that on her next turn. So uh, she could go ahead and hold on to this, but she's instead going to discard this, and that's going to get her one DNA as a bonus, and that's going to finish out her turn. This means Old Paw Setamol can go now, and unfortunately they drew a ton of these movement cards. I guess movement is pretty important, and they get one bonus movement on their turn. And of course there are some secondary abilities on there, so let's see what they can do with their turn. Now when we zoom out, we know that the overall goal for this round is to try and immunize this District 3 by getting the 6th Barrier Token down. Now, at first glance, it looks like we should have uh, Tyler and Noel do that because they have three of these build cards. But unfortunately, they are a long way away from being able to get over to this spot. And right now, it looks like Old Placetamol does have the movement to make this happen. So that means that they should be the one to do it on their turn. Now, in order to do this, Old Paw is going to need to use the subway. So that means as a action, they are going to spend three of their DNA, and that will pick up one of the subway tickets for them. Now, they can use this for the rest of the game, and it will allow them to move from one of these square subway stations to any of the other square subway stations uh, for just one action. Uh, they have one extra movement every single round because of their adrenaline shot ability, so they can use that right away to go from this subway station all the way over to this spot. That's going to finish out that move, and there is an egg on this location, so they can remove it. And then we can see that they need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 more movement to make it over to the spot. Well, I suppose it wasn't that unfortunate for them to draw all of these movement cards. That is going to be the 7 that they need, so that will bring them all the way over to here. And then they need 5 building action points to construct the final barrier. Well, looking at their hand, they have this wild for two, and that will be three, four, and five. So they actually met it exactly. This means they can add this barrier right over here, and then they will get three DNA as a bonus. Let's come back to District 3, and we can see that it now does have six of these immunity barriers, and that means this district is fully immunized. Now, the moment that happens, we get to remove every single one of the enemies from this area, and we get to remove every single one of the eggs from the spot. Now, unfortunately for us, that does mean that these infection tokens will last. It looks like this defense cannon will actually survive, but it will not need to do anything for the rest of the game because enemies will no longer spawn or exist inside this entire district. It's also worth noting that we are able to end the game if we are able to immunize districts equal to the number of players, so that is three total, and we have already immunized one of those. Overall, I'd say that was a pretty good turn for Old Pasetamol, and that is going to finish out their turn, so now Tyler and Noel can go. And it looks like they want to start things off by buying another weapon. Now they're going to spend four of their DNA, and that will allow them to buy this shoddy. Uh, that will give them four of these charges, plus one due to their extra ammo. Uh, and every time they remove a charge, they get four toward curing. So this is very good, although it does have a range of zero. So they can add this right over into their area with the four plus one charges. And now they're going to start things off by removing one of these. And they will also discard this card right here. And that's going to be four cure power plus one from this wild. And they do need to get to six. So they're going to discard this card as well. Or maybe they'll keep this for the move value and discard one of these DNA. Yeah, that makes sense. They have four, five, six right there. Which will take out this lazy parasite. And that will give Tyler three more DNA. Now this also pushes them up on the Cure Track, and their Frisker's Keeper's ability will activate, giving them two extra moves. Well, with the first of these movements, they can head right over here, and since they have an egg basket, they can collect these eggs without stopping on those spots. They can then put this into their area, and they have one movement left. But to that, they're going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 more movement. This brings them up to 7 moves right now, and with these, they can go 1, 2, 3, Four, five, which is going to allow them to collect another one of these eggs with their egg basket. And then with six, seven, they can head right over here into a barrier location. Once here, we can see that they have these two cards left in their hand, and that will get them to exactly five build power, which is what you need to build a barrier. So they can add this right over here. And that will give them the three DNA as a bonus, and that is going to finish out their turn.
At this point, everyone has taken their turn, so now we can go into the enemy phase. Currently, there are no wandering bacteria out on the districts because a couple of them got wiped out when District 3 was immunized. This means we can go into Step 2, where we will activate the lazy parasites. We start here with District 1, and we go with the lowest district uh, zone numbers first. That means 18 will activate. They are going to incubate an egg right onto their entrance, and then 19 will go. The entrance for 19 is right up here, and it already has an egg, so that means this will go clockwise right over here. Next up, we have District 2, and 18 and 19 will activate again. However, this time, uh, the egg for 18 will get sucked up by this defense cannon, and then the egg for 19 will also get sucked up by that defense cannon. So it has absorbed both of these, and again, it will be destroyed if there are ever five on the spot. So at this point, it can only take one more round of those eggs heading towards it. Next up, we can skip over District 3 because it is immunized, and then the Lazy Parasite in Zone 19 for District 4 will put an egg right here. Step 3 of the enemy phase involves doing a Frank Ebola action, but we still need 4 more infections to cause uh, these tokens to come out onto the map. And the 4th phase allows us to check all of our defense cannons, but so far none of them have more than 5 of these eggs on them. This means the enemy phase is over and we can move into the next round. There are no wandering bacteria to stand up, so now we can pass the starting player marker over here to Old Placetamol. Next up, we have to read an event, and this one says, uh, Policemen on strike. Germs are everywhere. Uh, Stanley came back from worse, right? <laughs> this does not sound very good for us. Uh, now it says we have to spawn as many active germs as there are players in the game, starting with the first district. Now again, active germs are the wandering bacteria, and we only have three districts now that one of them has been immunized. So let's start over here with District 1, and I do believe we have to draw a token from the bowl for each of these districts with these spawns. So in this case, we can pull this out, and we found Zone 9. So we can put the Wandering Bacteria right over here. Next up, we have District 2, and this one is going to come out in Zone 6. So we can add that Wandering Bacteria right over here. And then because this is a three-player game, we have to spawn one more, and that's going to go into District 4 because District 3 is immunized, and we can pull that wandering bacteria into Zone 17. So we can put that right over here, and that's going to finish out the event. But then, of course, we have to pull out a token from the bowl and then spawn a lazy parasite on each of those spots, and that is going to be Zone 8. So we can go ahead and pull these four out, and we can put this one here, this one here. Actually, we only get to put three out because we have an immunized district right here. So that one will go back right over here. And lastly, this one will go onto the eighth zone for the fourth district. And finally, we can draw our action cards. Now we're going to start with Old Placetamol, but at this point we've actually dealt out every one of the action cards in the game. So we have to do a quick little reshuffle right over here, and then we should be good to go. So we can start with Old Passat Mall, and they are currently way up here in District 3, which is fully immunized. So I think we got to get them out of here, and the best way for them to do that is to go to the subway station. Now that means they have to spend two movement to go here, two more to go here, and then three more here, and then finally one more to leave. So that is two plus two plus three plus one, which is eight movement total. Now they can do this by starting off with their adrenaline shot move, so that's one. Then they can discard this for two, then three, four with these wild action points. This will get them 5, 6, and then they will use 2 of their DNA to get up to 8. They can now use that by going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then with their subway pass, which they bought earlier, they can go to any other subway, and they're going to head right over here. Now there is an egg on that spot, so that means they can remove this, because that is going to finish out their current movement phase. And then from right here, they can use their one range penny chillin bomb weapon to attack into zone 18 because this is where the entrance is. Now, I just noticed that the text on this uh, weapon says destroys an adjacent, uh, the adjacent eggs. And I did not use that last time. Uh, sorry about that. I'm not sure if it actually mattered. But in this case, we will take care of that. But they can start off by removing this token, and that is going to add three cure power. And then they can discard both of these action cards to get the other three that they needed. That brings them up to 6, so they can successfully defeat this lazy parasite. And again, this weapon will destroy all adjacent eggs, and that is going to be this egg right here. As usual, they will get 3 DNA as a bonus for that successful cure action, and this will bring them up to the 5th spot on their cure track. And at this point, they have decided to finish out their turn. Uh, they are going to hold onto this. They like the idea of the movement and potentially the cure ability on it, so they want this one for the next round.
This means it's time for Tyler Null to go, and they definitely want to do some curing this turn. First things first, they have to leave this area, though, and that's going to cost them two movement, and then they want to enter into this area right here. So that will be three movement total, which they can get from discarding these two cards. And as they pass by this egg, they can, of course, pick it up, because, of course, they have an egg basket. They'll start by removing one token from their shoddy, which gives them four cure uh, action points. And then they can also discard this cure DNA card to get the other two that they needed in order to get to six. This will successfully cure this lazy parasite, which is going to get them three DNA. And it will move them up to the eighth spot on their cure track, which means they get a bonus action card. Uh, this is a two wild action points card. And then, of course, their Fisker's Keeper's ability activates, and they can now get two extra movements. Well, they figure they have a shoddy, which is really good at curing, so they will keep doing that this turn. And they want to go one, two, three, four movement. Now, of course, they only have two as a bonus, so they will start off by just discarding this two wild movement card to get over here. And then they will discard a charge from their shoddy to get four cure power, and they'll get rid of this right here, giving them three, which actually gets them up to seven cure power total. And that's more than enough to eliminate this wandering bacteria. This means they get yet another 3 DNA, and they get to go up on this track, and they get two more extra movements. Now, they've decided to set their sights on this lazy parasite here, so they will add to those two movements these four, so they are now at six, and they can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they can make that happen by discarding one of their DNA, and that is where they're going to finish their turn. This means it's now time for Neutralizer to take her turn, and the first thing she wants to do is pick up a item. She's going to spend 3 DNA, and that will allow her to have a subway ticket, so she can use this subway spot, and now she does want to move over there. Now as far as what her overall plan is, I think let's go ahead and have her start working on barriers in District 1. This has more of these enemies in it than District uh, 4 does right over here, and both of those districts already have one barrier. Now we can see right here she can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 movement. So she can go 1, 2, 3, and then with the 4th movement and her subway ticket, head right over here. Then she can go 5, 6, and then 7, 8. Now we can see that she has this 3 build action points card and this 2 wild card. So that gets her to the 5 points she needs to get this barrier built right over here. And that will give her three DNA as a bonus. And now her Builder's Gift activates. Uh, she once again constructed, so she gets the top card from the deck. And this is a three action point cure card. It also has one towards constructing. Now at this point, she could use these cards. And I think she's just going to discard this card to get one DNA. And then she's going to finish her turn here. She might end up using this to try and cure something on the next turn. And it also does add to the build value. So she likes having this around. Now that Neutralize's turn is done, we can go into the enemy phase, and in step one, we can activate the Wandering Bacteria. Now, there are actually two of them out here. This one will activate first, and it is going to put an egg down into the entrance for that zone, and then it will wander into the next zone, going from 9 to 10. And then right over here, we can see this Wandering Bacteria will put an egg down right here, and then it will wander up into the seventh zone of the second district. Now those are the only two wandering bacteria, so we can now go into the second step where we activate the lazy parasites. We'll start here with District 1, and the lowest value zone is 8. So that means this lazy parasite will put an egg right here into its entrance. And just like that, we have actually uh, have an infection right over here. I <laughs> didn't quite notice that was going to happen. Uh, that means we have to put one of these tokens right over here. This also means the infection track goes up once. And then a wandering bacteria will get spawned into the next zone. Now, if we look over here, this is zone 20, and that is the highest number. And so that means the next zone is actually zone 1 in the next district over. So we can put this line down right over here, and we have now activated this lazy parasite. But then this one activates, and it is going to put an egg right over here. And we have completed, unfortunately, another uh, triple egg spot around the zone, which is another infection. So I think we definitely messed up on our last turn. We probably should have done something about this uh, wandering uh, bacteria right here. This one egg ended up being... Uh, a big linchpin towards making all of these infections happen. Now once this goes down, this lazy parasite is going to be removed. So we once again go up once on the track, and we are just two infections away from Frank Ebola starting to put their uh, clues out onto the board, and each one of these tells you where Frank Ebola was, and each one also counts as an egg, which means they might cause even more infections to happen.
Lastly, we do have to spawn a wandering bacteria, and it will go into the next available zone, which is actually going to be the second zone in the second district. Now, that has finished out just the wandering parasites in District 1. That was pretty impactful overall. We can now come over here, and we can see this one in Zone 8 is going to incubate an egg right onto this entrance here. Next up, we have zone 18, which is going to try to put an egg here, but that's going to get sucked up by the defense cannon. And then 19 will also put an egg here, which gets sucked up by the defense cannon. Lastly, we have the 4th district, which is really quite empty. Talonol has done a great job of clearing out all of these enemies, but this lazy parasite is here, and we get to put one egg down onto its entrance. Next up, we have step three, where we would activate Frank Ebola, but that's not going to happen just yet. We need a couple more infections to happen before we have to start worrying about that. And then the fourth phase, we have to check our defense cannons. And this one right here does indeed have five of these eggs. That means these are going to get removed from the board, and this defense cannon has been destroyed. All right, let's move into the next round, and we can stand up these wandering bacterias. We can move the starting player pawn and draw another event card. Now this one says body aches. It says there is a feeling of dread and despair all across town. Everything hurts. Life is pain. Uh, the first germ in every zone is going to incubate one egg. We can start with the first district and the first of the enemies is in zone eight. And this lazy parasite is going to incubate once. And that means this is going to try to go to the entrance, but it can't. So it's going to go clockwise. And we once again have another infection over here. We've had a cascade of infections happen here in district one. That means we have to pull another one of these tokens and put it down. That means this lazy parasite gets knocked out and we have to pull another wandering parasite out. And that's going to go into the next zone, which is number nine. This means we, of course, have to push ourselves up once on this infection track, and it's starting to go up quite quickly as the board starts to get more saturated with these enemies. And now we can keep on moving with our Body Aches event. Now, District 2 right here has its first enemy right over here, so that is going to incubate once into the entrance for that spot. And then District 4 only has one enemy, so that's here at 8. It tries to incubate to its entrance, but it's uh, already occupied with an egg, so this will go clockwise down to here. With the event done, we can now draw a zone tile, and this one says that we're going to spawn uh, static parasites onto the 16th zone. Uh, that means we will take three of these. Uh, if we come over here, that is going to be 16, and all of these spots are currently open. The last thing we do before taking actions is we have to deal out our cards until everybody has six. Okay, Tyler can take their turn, and it looks like they have a lot of wild action points in their hand, and with their shoddy, they should be able to do at least one good cure action this turn. And over here in District 4, it does appear that they should do something about this lazy parasite. If it is allowed to keep doing what it does, it will make an infection in this spot. So that means Tyler wants to go 1, 2, 3, and that does mean they need to spend 3 of their movement points. And they can easily do that by discarding this card. Now they're going to try and cure this parasite. But before they do that, they do, of course, get to collect this egg with their egg basket as they walk through that zone. It's now time for their cure action, and they're going to start by removing one marker from their shoddy. That gives them four out of the six cure power that they need. And then they're going to add to that this one right here. It's two wild action points, so those can be wild cure points. So that is going to be enough to take out the parasite. So it gets knocked out of the zone. They will then get three more DNA, and they will go up once more on their cure track. That gets them to the 10 spot, which does mean they get a bonus uh, action card, which is yet another wild card. They're getting tons of these this round. And then as a bonus, their Frisker's Keeper's ability activates, giving them two extra move points. With these, they've decided to go one over here to exit the zone, and then the other one will bring them right over here. And now they want to keep moving, and they're going to leave this district. They feel like it's pretty buttoned up for the moment. Now they're going to do that by discarding this card, which gives them three more movement. So they can go one, two, and then at this entrance, they can use that third movement point to go to the entrance of any other district. When we zoom out, I think it's pretty obvious what they should do. Obviously, District 3 is immunized, and they can ignore it. District 1 has some enemies in it, but it also has two characters. And District 2 has no characters and a ton of enemies. So Tyler's going to appear right here in the entrance. And then they're going to spend both of these wild cards to get three movement points. That's going to allow them to go one, two, three, and as they walk over here, they can collect this egg. And the reason they're heading over here instead of uh, going after this wandering bacteria is because right now there is not going to be another infection over here on this turn. But over here, they can tell that there will be if this wandering bacteria is not taken out. 
The reason for that is because it will put an egg right down here, and then this lazy bacteria, or lazy parasite that is, will try to put an egg here but can't, and then it'll go here, which will create another infection. So by going over here and taking out this wandering uh, bacteria, they can try to stop an infection happening that is guaranteed if they were to ignore these enemies. Tyler can now cure again, and they're going to start by removing a charge from their shoddy, and whenever you use your weapons, it's effectively like using the DNA, so you have to pair these up with the action points coming from a card, so they can use this all good DNA wild card to get some cure points, and they can add that 2 to this 4, and that is the 6 that they need, which means they've successfully knocked out this wandering bacteria. So they're going to get 3 DNA as a reward, and they will go up once on the cure track, and they get 2 more extra move points. With these, they're going to go 1 to exit the zone, and then 2 to come over here, and that will allow them to collect yet another egg. And then, I think they're done with their turn. They have a 3 cure DNA card in their hand, and they could definitely make use of that next turn. With Tyler done, we can now head over to Nutra's turn, and she once again has quite a few of these build cards, and that is what she does best, and I know that's the main thing she's been doing this game so far, but it really is something that she does well, so I think she'll probably do some more of it this turn. We can see that she is currently up here in a wall spot in the first district, and if you remember, the game is going to end if we are able to completely immunize three of these districts. Now over here in District 1, we need four more walls, and District 4 is going to need five more walls, so that is nine more barriers to get to that endgame condition. Or we can defeat uh, Frank Ebola once he has uh, headed out into the districts. Now that is likely to happen somewhat soon, considering we are one infection away from having those clue tokens come out. But either way, I think we should have Neutralize continue to work over here. Now, at the moment, it probably makes sense for her to try and bounce to that location there. And that's going to be two movement to go down, and then two more movement to head into this spot. That's going to be four move total, and she did not draw that many of these move cards this round. So she will get one move with this, and then she will discard three of her DNA to get the other three. After that, she can go one, two, three, four. And that was, unfortunately, just one move action. So she is not allowed to get rid of this egg in the middle of that action. You can only do that if you have an egg-catching item. You know, speaking of that, there is one of these left over here, and Neutra does have some spare DNA. So yeah, let's go ahead and just say that she spent three of this to pick up this egg basket before she moved, and then with that move, she was able to grab this egg in passing. Next up, it's time to build another barrier. That's going to get the five building action points she needs, so we can put this right over here. And then as a bonus, she will get three DNA back, and her Builder's Gift will activate, giving her a random action card. And this one is another build one. It does have some movement on there, though. And at this point, I think it makes sense for her to use this card here. That's going to get her one move, and then she can add these two DNA to that. At this point, she has added five DNA to action points this round, so she cannot add more. But with those three movements, she can go one, two, and then three, entering zone 16 with this Lazy Parasite. Now this is going to work out well because she can discard this six action points towards curing, and that means she has eliminated this lazy parasite. That's only the second cure action she's done all game. Now we can see that because when this marker goes up here, it goes to the two spot. She of course gets three DNA as a bonus, and then as a perk for getting to the two location, she gets another bonus card, and this is a build slash move card. Overall, she likes the look of this card, so she's going to spend it right now getting three movement, and that will do one to exit the zone, and then two, three to come right down over there, and she's angling to head over here and try to build this barrier on the next turn, and with that in mind, she is going to keep this three build AP card for the next round. Okay, it's time for Old Pass Set Mall to go, and they certainly want to take care of this wandering bacteria. If it is allowed to stay right here, then it would create an infection in this area, of course as long as one of the characters wasn't on the spot. If this one stayed right here at the end of the round, then no new egg would come down, and that would stop an infection, but they figure they'd rather get right in over here and eliminate this uh, enemy. So that's going to be three movement to travel along here, and then a fourth one to enter the zone. And of course they have this adrenaline shot, which gives them one move per turn, so they can use that, plus this three from this card, to go one, two, three, four. Now as far as that move action went, they used this card for the three to enter this spot here, and then this was another action. So they actually paused right over here, and that does mean they were able to get rid of this egg, and now they're in zone 9 where they can combat this enemy. At this point, it's time for Old Passat Mall to go, and the first thing they want to do is spend all five of their DNA to buy a weapon. 
Now, when we come up here to the supply, they've decided to pick up this Setamol rifle, which I guess makes sense for old Pa Setamol. Uh, that is going to cost 5 DNA. It will add 4 to the cure value when they pull off the tokens, and it will also give them plus 1 to the range. With that one range in mind, they have now decided to get rid of this three move card, and that will allow them to go one, two, three across this road. They will stop right here, which is going to get rid of this egg, and they can now shoot into this zone without having to actually go in there because of that rifle they just got. Now it is time for them to cure, so they can get rid of this for two uh, cure action points, and they can remove a charge, giving them four more from the set all rifle, and that will successfully cure this wandering bacteria. Next up, they will get the reward of 3 DNA, and they'll go up once on the cure track. That's going to get them to this spot, which gives them a bonus action card, which is 1 wild DNA. Now at this point, Old Paw Setamol is pretty close to these barrier spots up here, and they do have this wild DNA and this 3 build action point card, so I think let's try and have them head up here. Now they have their adrenaline shot, which gives them plus 1 to their movement, and they would need 4 movement to head right up here, so that means they could use the 1 they have. And then they can add to that one from this card, one from here, and one from a DNA they discard. That's going to give them the four they need to go all the way right up here. And since they could split this up into two move actions, that means on their way they could pause right here. And that means uh, in the middle of those move actions, they can get rid of this before doing the next move action to make it all the way up here. And then they're going to discard these two to get to their five build power, which will construct this district's fourth barrier. As a bonus, they're going to get three DNA for doing that, and that's going to finish out their turn. They do have this card left in their hand, but they figure they'll keep it. All right, we've all taken our turn, so now it's time for the enemy phase. We can begin with the Wandering Bacteria. This one is in District 1, so it is going to activate. It will incubate one egg right over here, but that's um, occupied, so it will go clockwise over to there, and then it will wander. Over here, we start with this bacteria here. It is going to try to incubate onto its entrance, but that's blocked, so it will go clockwise, and then when it wanders, it actually kind of jumps over this uh, other one right here, and then this one will activate. This one will incubate an egg onto its entrance right here, and then it will wander right over there, and that is it for our wandering bacteria, and now we can activate the lazy parasites. Uh, over here, we have none, but then over here, there are quite a few, and perhaps it was a mistake to ignore uh, this kind of gang of lazy parasites here. Uh, let's begin over here at 8. This one will try to spawn right where Tyler Null is, but that's obviously blocked by a character, so this is going to go clockwise over to there, and then we come around to 16. This one will spawn an egg on its entrance, then 18 will try to spawn an egg on its entrance, and that one is right over here, so that's successful. And then finally, 19 is going to try to spawn on its entrance right here, but that is uh, currently occupied, so this will come clockwise over to this position here. Now amidst all of those eggs coming down, we can now look back here and see that zone 17 is infected. Now this happens immediately, we have to put this down right here, and that means we're going to have to spawn a wandering bacteria. That's going to try to go into 18, but it's full, 19 is full, but 20 is not, so that can go right over here. And then of course we have to go up once on the infection track. This means we're going to go from 6 to 7 on this track, and we have officially reached the point where Frank Ebola is going to enter the fray out on the board. Now, as I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video, at the beginning, we don't bring Frank Ebola out. Instead, we just know where he was in the past. Now, what that means is we're going to take one of these clue tokens, and we're going to put it down onto the subway space that is in the district where the seventh infection occurred. And this is a clue to let all of us know that Frank Ebola was in that location in the past, although we're not exactly sure where he is now. So let's come back to District 2, which is where the 7th infection occurred, and this will go down on the subway spot. If you ever have to put a clue down where there's an egg, you just remove the egg. Well, with all of that commotion of bringing Frankie out, I have to make sure to not forget that there is one lazy parasite over here in District 4. It's a pretty empty district over here. It's a bit sleepy right now, but they are going to put an egg down on the entrance to its zone. Now that we're done with the Lazy Parasites, we can now do the first Step 3 enemy phase activation of the game, where we see what happened to Frank Ebola. Now again, this only happens once he is out in the fray, and we know that his last known location was the subway station here in District 2. And the way this works is we are going to draw tokens up to the number of players to see where the next clue goes. As soon as a valid clue comes out, then we will stop, and in this case, the first one we see has a single dot on it. Now what that means is we look to the last location that had a clue token, and if any of the streets have just a single dot on them, then that will dictate where the next clue goes. 
In this case, it looks like all of these are twos or threes. So we get to draw again from the stack and we have found another single value pip. So that is not gonna do it. We have to draw one more time from the pile and we have found a double pip spot. Now it's important to note that if after drawing tokens equal to the number of players, there are uh, no legal places to put a new clue token down, then that will be the moment that Frankie has become cornered and the standee for them will come out onto the last known clue spot. Once that happens, we can all attack Frankie and we have to defeat him three times or do three successful cure actions in order to get to the other successful end game condition. Uh, the first one, of course, is to immunize three districts and the uh, second one is to defeat Frankie. Now, the first successful cure action will need eight action points. The second will need 10 and the third will need 12. It's also worth noting that Frankie will only ever be on a node and players are never allowed to be where Frankie is, which means the only way to attack Frankie is with a weapon with range. We could of course add scopes to our other weapons, but we have to have weapons in order to successfully cure him. Either way, we know the third token we pulled had two pips on it, so that means the clue token is going to come down right over here. Frankie has not been cornered just yet. We can replace this spot with an egg. We know the last known location for Frankie was over here, and now we can go into the fourth step of the enemy phase. We're going to check all of our defense cannons, but it looks like they are all fine, so we can now move into the next round. The first thing we have to do for this round is stand up any new wandering bacteria, and then we can pass the starting player pawn. That's going to come over here to neutralize it. and now it's time to draw another event card. Uh, in this case, we have found one called Malaise. The text of this says that nothing seems to be working for uh, Stanley. If only he'd remember which meds to take. It says that each player can only draw up to five cards this turn, so our actions are going to be a little bit more limited than before. Next up, we can spawn three more lazy parasites, and they are all going to appear in zone 11. So we can take all of these from the supply right here. Uh, zone 11 for the District 1 is actually occupied already, so this is going to go into zone 12. And then 11 is free in District 2 and District 4 over here. Next up, we can draw our cards, but remember we have a malaise event, which means we all only have five cards to play with this round. All right, it's time for Neutralize to take her turn. Now, when we survey the different districts, it seems that District 2 is in a lot of trouble. Uh, right now, Tyler is over here by themselves, but we are also just two of these barriers away from immunizing this district so that we can ignore it entirely and potentially win the game by immunizing one more district or, of course, trying to corner uh, uh, Frank Ebola and curing him out. Now, I think with that in mind, maybe we should just try and focus this turn to have these last two barriers made and try to shore things up a little bit in District 2 and then maybe send a bunch more people over here into District 2 and try to clean things up. Perhaps this will be the actual last district we immunize. Uh, there is one barrier over on District 4, but perhaps we won't get there. Either way, I do think it does make sense to push our luck a little bit and try to get these barriers built. I know that we lose the game if we have 13 infections, and that is just six more total, and obviously they can start to cascade quite a bit, but I'm hoping Tyler can run around and grab a bunch of these eggs. So let's start with Neutralize coming right over here, and that's going to be two movement points and then two more to enter this location. Now she can get to that by discarding this card right here, and then she's also going to get rid of this card. That will be three plus one or four, and now that she's over here, she can go ahead and build that barrier. And she's going to do that with a little bit of overkill. That's going to be three plus three or six action points where she just needed five, so that is going to be successful. She will, of course, get three more DNA as a bonus, and her Builder's Gift will activate. That's going to be one card when she builds, and it is going to be another Builder's DNA one. It also has two movement on there. At this point, it's time for Neutralize to try and get out of here. We're obviously going to try and have Old Possetamol do this last barrier. So we can have her move, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, five movement. So going right over here is going to be two movement. And then right here gets uh, three, four. And then she does want to get over here, which is going to be five, six, seven movement total which means she has to ditch two of her DNA to make that happen. With that, she is done with her turn, and now it's time for Old Paws set them all to go. Now, in order to immunize this area, we just need a barrier right here, so that's going to be one, two, three, four movement to get there. And it looks like Old Paw can get there by discarding this three movement, and they have plus one movement every turn. Next up, Old Paw can discard both of these cards to get to the five uh, building action points they need. They can put this barrier right here, and that's going to get them three of these DNA points as a bonus. And, of course, this region is now immunized. Just like before, that means we will remove all of the enemies, and we will remove all of the eggs, but of course the infection tokens stay. 
Next up, it's time for Old Paw to try and get out of this district now that it's immunized. They're going to start off by moving once, and then they are going to discard five of their DNA in order to get five more movement points. So that is six movement points total. They will use two to go here, and then that'll be three, four, five, and six. And they have now positioned themselves well to uh, leave this district on the next round, just like um, uh, Neutraliza has done. Unfortunately, neither of them were able to actually get this done and move into District 2. So uh, we'll see just how bad District 2 gets on this round, because they decided to build barriers instead. At this point, Old Paw is officially done. They're going to keep this card in their hand because three cure power next turn might be very good considering just how many enemies there are in District 2. Alright, it's time for Tyler to go, and they're going to start things off by buying a new weapon. Now, there certainly are a lot of good options out here, and they could afford any of them, but they've decided they want to pick up this set all rifle. Uh, they thought about getting this ibuprofen launcher. That costs 7 DNA, and it does 5 cure damage, and it removes adjacent eggs, but they figure they might want to hold on to this um, till the uh, future when they might need it in order to potentially take down Frank Ebola. So they can put this weapon right over here, and that is going to cost them five of their DNA, so they can discard all of that right here. And then this naturally comes with three charges, but their extra ammo means they get a fourth charge to play with. Weapons in hand, Tyler decides they now want to start curing. They are already at the entrance for this zone 8, and the weapon they just got does have a range of one, so they can shoot right into here now. And they can do that by pulling a charge off the rifle. Now, whenever you use a weapon, you do have to have it go with a card of the right type. So they're going to use this card here. That means they're actually doing four plus three or seven uh, cure action points where they just needed six, but they think this is still a good idea. So they've successfully cured this lazy parasite. And that's going to get them three DNA, as well as pushing them once up on the cured track. That gets them to another even number, so they get a bonus action card. Uh, this one has some more curing and some movement on it, so that's certainly good. And then they, of course, get two extra movement points for their ability. With these, they're just going to use one of them to head right over here, and they can collect this egg along the way with their egg basket. And they're just going to stop here, because they now want to try and cure this wandering bacteria, once again using the range of one into that zone. Just like before, they can do that by pulling a charge off their rifle, and that will give them four cure power, and they can add this one right here. That'll be two plus four, or six, which will successfully cure this wandering bacteria here. This means they once again get three more DNA, and at this moment, they're at the top of their track here, but the rules say every other one of your cure actions to get a bonus. So I'm going to have this reset down right over here, and then they once again can move two extra points. Now with this movement, they've decided to head down over here. They're going to try and do an angle going through here, maybe taking out this uh, uh, parasite, and then heading over here to pick up this egg. They're trying to make sure that these spots around here do not actually become more infected. With that in mind, they have to move three more spaces to get over here, so they can use this card here. That's going to bring them onto this location, and this is an egg, so I do believe they can pick it up even though it's a Frank Ebola egg. I think the only thing you can't do is pick up the last of the eggs that was just dropped down, because you have to know where Frankie was last. It's time for Tyler to continue his rampage. He's going to shoot right here into zone 18 which will pull the third charge of the turn off of the rifle, and then they'll discard this card, so they're at 4 plus 3 or 7, which is more than they needed to get this done. That's going to remove this lazy parasite. This will give Tyler 3 more DNA. It will also push the cure track up again, getting them 1 more of these cards, so they just have a really big turn going on right here, and they will get 2 more extra moves with their ability. With these two, Tyler's going to head over to there, and that does take three movement, so they can discard this card to get the third one. And once they land on this location, they can go ahead and collect this egg, so we're no longer worried about an infection over here. And at this point, I don't think Tyler is done, because they can now use this card right here for two movement. They can add one to that by discarding one of their DNA. I believe this is the first DNA they've discarded this turn for adding action points. That will allow them to go right down here, and now they can use this card plus the last charge from their rifle. They've used all four charges this turn, and they can then get one plus the four right here, getting them to five, and then they can spend one more of their DNA getting to six, and that will allow them to shoot into zone three, and they have been incredibly effective this turn at taking care of the enemies in District 2. So for the fourth time in the round, they will get three more DNA as a bonus, they will go up once more on the cure track, and they will get two more extra movement points. 
when we look out to the board, it would make sense to try and go over here, but that takes three movement points, and since they're not using a card to do this, they cannot modify it with any of their DNA. So I figure they'll just go right down over here and pick up another egg. Okay, Tyler's Rampage turn is finally over. They cured four of the enemies in this zone. That was really powerful. Now, at this point, we can go into the enemy phase, and the first step involves activating the Wandering Bacteria. There's just one of them left, and it's right over here. So that's going to try and put an egg down in the entrance, and that, unfortunately, is going to create another infection right over here. So we can put another infection token down there, and that's going to spawn another wandering bacteria into the next zone. And then this wandering bacteria is going to wander over here into zone 6. We do, of course, have to move the infection track once again. We are just five infections away from losing the game, but at this point, I'm starting to feel hopeful that we'll be able to wrap things up before that happens. That's going to finish out our wandering bacteria, so now the lazy parasites will go. We can see this is the first one. It's going to put an egg down onto this location because its entrance is already full. Then we can move up to this one here. It is going to put one, trying to put it onto the entrance, but that is blocked. So it will put an egg down there. And then finally, this one will again try to go to the entrance, but it's blocked. So that egg will go down over here. Over here in District 4, we can see this lazy parasite is going to put an egg into the entrance. And this one will put an egg right over here. We are now at step three, and it's time to see where Frank Ebola tried to go. Uh, we can start by drawing a token, and it has a two on it. And whenever there are multiple options, we can see there are three of these two streets. You effectively start at the north position, and you go clockwise. So that means this street is the first of those. So we can take one of the clue tokens and put it right down here. And unfortunately, it looks like by putting that there, another infection happened. We can put this down right over here, and this lazy parasite will be removed from that zone. And then a wandering parasite will come in at the 20 point. And of course, the infection track will go forward again. The fourth step involves checking our defense cannons, but right now we don't really have any online. This one's just hanging out in an immunized district. So we can now go into the next round of the game, and the first thing we do is we stand up any of these uh, wandering parasites. It looks like two were created in that last round, and then we can move the starting player marker over here to Old Paw Setamal. It's time to draw the next event card for this round, and this one says, uh, looks menacing, guess the subway's out. It says that something Stanley ate has blocked his everything, every which way. Now that means the subway entrances cannot be used this turn, which is a bit of a bummer considering Neutralizer is uh, was planning on using it, but either way, we are going to have to plan around that. Next up, it's time to spawn two of these lazy parasites because there are only two of these non-immunized areas and they are going to go down into zone 8. So we can put this one right over here and this one will go down over there. The last thing to do before we take actions is to draw up to six cards. And now it's time for Old Paw Setamal to go, and they drew four out of five cards that have the uh, curing action points as the primary one. Well, when we come over here to the districts, we know that they want to get into District 2, and they are at the regular entrance, not the subway entrance. So they're going to use their Adrenaline Shot once per uh, round ability to get one movement, which will bring them right over here. And when they land on the spot, that will eliminate this egg. Next up, let's have Old Paw move twice, and that means they can go right along here. That's going to eliminate this egg, and now they've decided to use their rifle to shoot through this entrance into Zone 11. They can pull a charge off, which is going to give them four curing power, and they just need to add two to that, and they've decided to use this card here to make that happen, which means they've successfully cured this lazy parasite. That's going to give them three DNA as a bonus, and their cure track will go up to seven. And then they're going to move again using this card here. That gives them just one move, but they will discard two of their DNA to make that three, and that will bring them right over onto this spot. That will eliminate this egg, and it means they're once again at the entrance of a location with an enemy, so they're going to shoot in. Now we can see over here in their area that all three of their cards have these cure values on them, and they've decided to use this one here. That's going to just add one, and they can remove this token, which will get them to four, and they can then use this DNA to get them all the way up to the six total. And the reason they're doing that is because they're thinking they're going to hold on to these because there is a chance that Frank Ebola might appear before the next round, and if he does, then they like the idea of having lots of really big cure cards to try and take him out. So they did get to six, which is going to eliminate this wandering bacteria. 
and that's going to get them three more DNA, and they go up once more on the Cure Track, which is going to get them a bonus action card. This one has two movement on it and three building power, and this does give them some pretty good options. Uh, they could use the movement to try and enter one of the zones with another one of these enemies in, and they could then discard both of these to get to the six to eliminate it. However, they have decided they're not going to take any more actions. The reason for that is because only one of these cards has movement on it, and they like the idea of being on this spot at the end of the round. The reason for that is because right now, uh, the last known location of Frankie Bolo was here, and there are just two roads that go into that with these three dots on them. Now the plan is we can have um, an old paw hang out here and then have another character on this spot, which means if with those three draws we don't hit any of the two values, if we only hit the ones and the threes, then we will successfully corner Frankie and he will pop out. So we are playing the odds a little bit. These are good cards and I, I just think it makes sense for them to hold on to it. The odds are slightly in our favor that this will happen and they want to be ready to pounce in that moment. Uh, given that, they've actually decided they're going to discard this card right here, and they're just going to take one DNA point for it. It's now time for Tyler's turn, and they've decided they want to buy another weapon. When they look over to the options, we can see there are just four left, and they've decided to go cheap this round. They're going to pick up this Penny Chillin' Bomb. That's going to destroy adjacent eggs. It only costs three DNA, and it does have one range. Normally this would come with just two charges, but their extra ammo means they have three of them to play with, and now it's time for them to start moving. So they will discard this to get two movement action points, and that will allow them to go one, two, and now they can shoot into zone six with their range one weapon. They of course have to discard a cure card along with this, and they're going to get rid of this one, so that is three plus three, or six curing action points that they need. And this will eliminate the target. Now, they did use the Penny Chillin' Bomb, which would eliminate any adjacent eggs, but it looks like there aren't any right over here. So Tyler will get their three bonus DNA. They will go up once more on the Cure Track, which will get them another one of these bonus cards. And they now get two extra movements, so they're starting off their rampage once again. With these two movement, they're going to easily move around the outside of the board. And once again, they're going to shoot into this spot to try and cure that Lazy Parasite. And they will successfully do that by removing this token and this one here, getting them to six once again. That's going to remove this lazy parasite, and the Penny Chillin' Bomb would eliminate all of the eggs in the area, but this is the last known uh, location of Frank Ebola, so we can't take that off. We have to know that he was there last, so that is not going to get eliminated. And then Tyler will get three more DNA. They're just drowning in it over here. They'll go up once more on the Cure Track, and they will get two more extra movement. With these, Tyler's going to move right up here and then not use their second one. They can collect an egg along the way, and then they're going to shoot into here with their weapon. Just like before, they can use this charge here, which will eliminate their weapon. They used all of the charges again this round, and that is three cure power. They can get rid of this for two more, and they'll get rid of one DNA to get to the six that they needed, which will take care of this wandering bacteria and give Tyler three more DNA, one more bump up on their uh, Cure Track, which gives them another card, and it will give them two more movement. In this case, they're going to go one, two, three, four, which again is four movement instead of the two they had. They can make up for that by discarding these two movement points here, and they're going to try to take out this enemy. Now at this point, they could buy another weapon, but there are only three left in the entire game, and they figure it probably makes sense to hold on to those for the next round. So instead, they're just going to do this the old-fashioned way. They're going to do a cure action, do going one, two, three, four with this wild right here, and then they will get to five and six by discarding two of their DNA. That'll successfully cure the enemy, which removes them from the map, and gives Tyler three more DNA, as well as another bump on the cure track, and two more extra moves. With this movement, they're simply going to walk back right over here. This is not the most recent of the Frankie Bola uh, clues, so this can be removed as he walks along, and I think that's going to end their turn. All right, it's time for Neutral Liza to take her turn, and realistically, I think we just want to get her over here landed on this spot. That way we can block off both of the three value streets from where Frankie Bola last was. Now, in order to do that, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 movement. And it looks like she is just barely able to do that by going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then donating 5 of these DNA as extra movement AP to get to 11. 
This means neutralize I can get there, but it's a pretty long way over there. And unfortunately, I think that's everything she does on her turn. Uh, neither of these cards are particularly good for her, so she's going to discard both of them for one DNA each, and that's just going to finish it. This means all of the players have taken a turn, so we can now go into the enemy phase. We start off with the Wandering Parasites, but we have cleaned all of them off the board, and that means we could go to the Lazy Parasites, and we've eliminated all of them from over here as well. That being said, there is this District 4 over here, which we've been ignoring for a couple turns. It looks like this Lazy Parasite's going to activate first. Then we have this one, which will put an egg there. And then this one is going to try and put an egg there, there, and finally it'll go here. And unfortunately, that means an infection happens. Now, uh, if we'd been paying attention, we could have easily seen that happening. But I think it did make sense to focus on the things that we have been doing. Hopefully, this doesn't uh, come back to bite us. We can put this token right here. That is going to eliminate this lazy parasite and spawn a wandering parasite right here. And then the infection track goes forward one more time, and we are just three infections away from losing the game. It's now time for the third step of the enemy phase, and we get to see if our attempts to corner in Frank Ebola are successful. Now again, we are only going to pull these tokens until we hit a number equal to the number of players, and if we hit any with two pips on it, then Frankie will escape down one of these two streets. Now the first one has a one on it, and there are no ones. The second token that we draw, we'll maybe take this one over here, that has a three on it. Now, we have blocked off both of the threes, so that means Frankie is not able to escape down either of those ways. And now we can see the final draw. It's going to be out of this token right here, and we have a single one. That means we have pulled three tokens, and none of these have successfully allowed Frankie to sneak around to a new location. And that means we have cornered Frankie, and we can now bring out the figure for Frankie. We can put that down right onto the spot on the board, and we can officially try to start curing Frankie as one of the ways we can win the game. With that done, we can now check our defense cannons, but they all seem fine. So now let's go into the next round of the game. The first thing we do is we stand up any of the new wandering bacteria. We can then pass the uh, first player token over here, and then it's time to draw another event. So let's see what we have. This one says Architect. Uh, down below it says Peter O'Toole is passing through and uh, his building expertise is invaluable. It looks like a good night's uh, rest really does help and buildings only cost four this turn. Now, uh, obviously, I think it makes sense for us to try and uh, cure Frank Ebola, but with this event out, we also have the option of trying to do a barrier building blitz to end the game in our favor that way as well. The next step for the new round involves spawning two new Lazy Parasites. They will come down into the second zone, it looks like. We can now add this one right over here, and this one goes over there. Uh, having these immunized zones has really been helping us out, and the last thing we get to do is draw cards. It's time for players to take actions, and Tyler gets to start things off, and just like the previous couple rounds, they are going to begin by purchasing a weapon. Now, as I said before, Frank Ebola will always live on an intersection, and you cannot be in the same spot they're at. So you have to hit him from a range, and there are just three weapons left. Now, one of them has a range on it, and the other two don't. But we do have two of these scopes, which add one range to a weapon that does not have any. Now, I think each player is likely going to try and buy one of these weapons, and I'm hoping we can do the three cure actions that we need to take down Frank Ebola on this turn and win. Now, with all of that in mind, uh, the first cure action costs 8, the second costs 10, and the third costs 12. So Tyler has to consider their best option. After looking at what their partners have, they figure the best thing for them to do is take the cheapest weapon, and they will also pick up this scope as an item. Now, each item costs 3 DNA, and this weapon costs 3, so that is going to be 6 DNA total, which it appears they can easily spend. Now, if you remember, once the game is over, we will only win if we have 30 extra DNA left over. And right now, I think we're doing pretty okay with that, even though we are spending quite a bit. Now, the reason for that is because every time we successfully cure Frankie, we get five more DNA. So that is definitely going to help us out. Next up, Tyler can put all of their charges on their item. They get an extra one from this ammo right here, and now they've decided to just uh, try and attack Frankie. They are currently just one away, and they do now have a range with their sighted scope, so they have to get to eight cure value to make this happen. They, of course, have to use their weapons. So that's going to be two out of the eight. They can pull this off for three, four, five, and then this will be six, seven, and eight, and that will successfully do the first out of three cure actions at Frankie Ebola. 
when we come back to District 2, we can see the street that Tyler was able to shoot down. Uh, Frankie was right here, so the first cure has been successful. And what happens is Frankie will now teleport to the next subway station in an available non-immunized district. Currently, there are only two non-immunized districts, so Frankie will appear over here in District 4. Next up, we can put a token down to show that we have cured Frank Ebola once. Again, this is a prototype version of the game, and in the final product, there will be a track showing the 8, 10, and 12 cure values you need to go for the three steps. Next up, just like I said before, Tyler will get 5 DNA instead of the normal 3 for successfully curing Frank Ebola, and then they do get two more extra move points for their ability. With these, Tyler can now head right over here, and they are at a subway, but they don't actually have a ticket yet. Now, if they were to spend the three DNA to grab that, I am worried. I don't think we'd actually have enough to win the game. So instead, uh, from this point, they're just going to use their cards for movement. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to this point where they can grab one of these eggs right here. And that's going to finish out their turn. This means it's now time for Neutra Lisa to go. She's right over here at this subway station, and what she'd really like to do is chase Frankie Bulla down and cure him, but in order to do that, she is unfortunately a little bit poor on DNA in order to buy the weapon and the site that she needs to make that work. Now with that in mind, she's actually going to utilize her ability to get a bonus card when building. Now this might seem a little bit crazy, but she's going to start off by doing a single movement, this will allow her to enter zone 18 right here, and then she will discard both of these cards, which will give her 5 building power. Now, she only needed 4 due to the event, but this is just the way the cards uh, landed out for her, the way it's best to use. So this will allow her to build a defense cannon right over here. Now, at the moment she does that, she is going to gain 3 of this DNA back, which she will need, and her Builder's Gift ability will now activate. This will get her an extra card whenever she constructs, and this is the reason she constructed. In this case, it looks like this has two movement on it, and now she is in a position to try and get the weapons she needs and to move it to the right spot on the board. She's decided to move first, and this two movement card she drew is certainly pretty good, although any card she would have taken could have been discarded for a DNA, and that DNA would have been enough to pull this whole turn together. Either way, she can use both of these for four movement. This way she can go one, two, and then three, four coming up to the spot. She does have an egg basket, so she can steal this egg right here, and now she needs to buy weapons so that she can shoot Frankie. When we come up here, there are just two options available, and she's going to pick up the shotgun, and she's going to pick up this sight, which will add one to the range of a range zero weapon. Now that is going to be four DNA plus three DNA for this item, and she had eight DNA total. That means she can spend this seven right here, and then she can lodge this item up there, and of course get her charges for this shoddy, although she's only going to use it once this turn. And now she is in a position to shoot at Frankie Bola. Uh, she is just one street away. She has one range due to this site, and she can now start this uh, process off. Uh, discarding this card is going to get her three cure uh, action points. This will get her two, so she is now at five of the ten she needs. This token will get her four, so that means she is at nine now, and just barely she is able to add this one DNA, her very last DNA, to this to get one more AP, and that will get her to the ten cure action points that she needed in order to do the second cure action on Frank Ebola. We can look over here to District 4, and that is going to cause Frank Ebola to flee to the next available subway. And that happens to be back here in District 2, where he is once again already in range of the uh, old Pasetamol character. Either way, we aren't done, because we can put another token over here onto Mr. Frankie Bola's card, and with just one more, we will enter the endgame. Now, the last thing that we will get is 5 overall DNA, which we can add right over here, and that is going to finish out Neutralize's turn. She just barely had enough resources to pull off that cure attack. This means it's time for Old Pa Setamol to go, and we already know that he is just one street away, uh, but he does need a weapon, and fortunately, he has exactly 7 DNA right now, which is precisely what he needed to pick up the very last weapon of the game, which is the Ibuprofen Launcher. This destroys all of the adjacent eggs, it also adds 5 to the overall cure value, and importantly, it has one range by itself.
So we can add this over here and put three charges on it, and it's time for Old Pa to launch it. Now, of course, they have to spend their cards along with this, and they're going to use these two cards that they saved from last round. That's going to be three plus three, which is six. They can pull this off for five more. Uh, that means they are now at 11 of the 12 that they needed, and right over here, it looks like they do indeed have the 12th that they needed. The rest of their cards did not have any of those Cure AP, so they just barely had what they needed to get the third third cure attempt off on uh, Mr. Frank Ebola. Uh, that needed to be a 12, and they got there, so they could put this token right there on the board. We can come back to District 2 and see this shot was successful. That will uh, eliminate Frank Ebola from the game. And now Old Pa can take more actions, but I think they are done. The reason for that is because once we have gotten to the point where either we have immunized a number of districts equal to the number of players, or if Frank Ebola has been defeated, then we finish out all of the player turns, and then the game ends. We do not actually go into the last enemy phase of the game, so we will end now. We can see that an end game trigger has happened, but once again, we will only be successful in this uh, play if we ended the game with 30 or more DNA in all of our stores. Before we calculate this, we know that Old Pa did get 5 DNA for successfully curing Frank Ebola, and now we can count up what we have. Uh, over here, we have 5 uh, uh, that is coming over from Old Pa. We have 5 coming in from Neutraliza, so uh, between these two characters, we just have 10. So we need 20 from uh, uh, Tyler Null over here, but that is not going to be a problem. Obviously, Tyler was really effective at eliminating enemies like crazy in this game. Tyler has 10, 20, uh, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 DNA in their area. And then, at the end of the game, every two of these captured eggs with the egg baskets is worth one extra DNA. So that means uh, Neutraliza actually has plus one right here. So that is 27 plus 11, which is 38. And then 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So uh, we easily got to the 30 that we needed. And this means the game is over. We successfully won the game and that completed this full three player game of Trouble in Temple Town. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. It seems like right there near the end, things were getting a little bit more sticky than I was expecting. Uh, right in the middle portions of the game, it seemed like things were going quite well. But down near at the end, we were kind of focusing really on that uh, District 2 area, and District 4 was about to go really bad. We were just a couple infections away from actually losing the game. And if the game had gone on a couple more rounds, we could have been in a pretty big problem. Uh, as it was, it seems like we wrapped things up pretty well, although it is worth noting that there were some mild rules uh, discrepancies that happen throughout this play, and um, that's partly because of uh, me just kind of misinterpreting the rules, and partly because the rules are still being honed in uh, for the final product. Uh, in particular, uh, one that really sticks out is the fact that you are supposed to draw a district, uh, a zone number for each one of the districts as you add in new lazy parasites. Uh, it seems like that would definitely vary the positions of these things up, so uh, in the early stages of the game, we could not necessarily all easily go over and take out those early parasites because they happen to to be really close to these zone entrances. Now, another uh, seemingly small but significant rule issue is that you are not allowed to actually enter a zone and then not take care of that uh, uh, enemy. Uh, there were a few times where we kind of entered a zone ready to take care of it on the next turn, and that means we had to be a little bit more careful with how we were positioning all of those things. And on top of that, you are never allowed to cure the Frank Ebola eggs, and we did that a couple times. And with those sticking out there permanently, we would have had a lot more possibilities for infections, especially especially late on in the game. Now, I think when you look at the gameplay as a whole, these rules mistakes don't really change the overall tenor of the game. I think this was a pretty good showing of it overall. Uh, from a strategic perspective, I do have to admit that uh, when I was editing this video going through it, I was kind of um, talking to the screen like, John, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It seems like there were a couple turns early on in the game where we were kind of focused on a plan and kind of forced it to happen with the cards. In particular, there was one turn where I was planning on having I think Old Pa Setmal uh, cure one of the enemies, but the cards they had were just covered in build actions. Now, the secondary actions had a lot of the cure actions on them, so we ended up spending like our entire turn dumping all of those cards for secondary actions to take care of curing when realistically, we were not in a really bad spot with that enemy. We could have waited a couple turns, and I think Old Pa should have certainly used all of those primary actions to go and build some barriers early on in the game. So it seems like uh, maybe I did not play this game as super well as I could have 
overall, and I think that's part of the reason why the overall play was a little bit longer than I was anticipating. Of course, a big part of that has to do with the fact that uh, in these playthroughs, I am, uh, you know, going through all of the motions, explaining all of them out loud, and when you're playing this with other people, many of these things can happen kind of simultaneously, especially during the uh, enemy action uh, phase. So um, I think at this point, that's going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.